so spring is here it's time to plant our potatoes um, we've got some really cool varieties that we're trying for the first time this year favorite all-time favorite so far is the German butterball this year we get to try the Norland red and uh, the Viking potato potatoes are my favorite vegetable because potatoes are so versatile they store for so long potatoes go in like every single dish they're delicious you can cook them a million ways and they're delicious have i said that yet we're growing the potatoes using the roof stout method i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that but it's basically using mulch as the medium to grow in the roof stout method uh, decreases water usage decreases weeds um, and decreases labor so uh, yay for all those things. Let's make all the animals quiet and get them fed. Hi, Cece, my best cow. Animals are loud when they're hungry or in danger. None of them are in danger. They're just all hungry. How the sheep? Man, the sheep. Beautiful sheep. Panda desert sheep are fantastic. You know they're fun to catch. Um, but uh, very, very economic animal on our farm. The sheep do a fantastic job. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Their meat is delicious. Hey guys, we have a problem. How many pigs you see here? I see where you got through, man. It's because this. Hey, get in there. No, no, no. <laughs> Got them in. Yeah, so this is what happened. Went right underneath there. This one's not connected to this one, which makes it not connected to that one. So that fence wasn't electrified at all. So. Everything 
is fed. Everything is eating and happy and that's how we like it. All right, let's go plant those potatoes. potatoes. Now, potatoes don't grow from a seed like a lot of other vegetables and fruits that we know. Uh, potatoes grow from a potato. On this potato, you can see there's tons of sprouts and these sprouts came from those little eyes. This is where the sprouts or the green, the, the growth will come from, from a potato. Now, each of those eyes could potentially become its own potato plant. So pretty marvelous that I could cut this up to into two or three pieces and plant this and get five to 10 pounds from each one of those pieces. Really, this is a staple on our farm. We have potatoes almost every single day. So we're gonna make a big effort to plant a lot of these. Uh, but once you cut them up into pieces where you have an eye on each piece, you'll lay them out. Uh, we lay them out on a baking pan and allow them to cure for about a week or two before we decide uh, it's ready to plant them. So this uh, healing or skin, uh, this kind of scabbing over that happens protects the potato, protects the potato from bacteria and viruses and stuff like that. It gives you a better chance uh, that this will survive and not get all mushy. So if you're growing potatoes for the first time and you've got to uh, chit your potato, um, I've got a knife here and you'll basically, uh, I think the, the rule of thumb here is to just get a few eyes on each piece of potato. So you see this one, I'm just going to kind of cut across there. There we go. There's one piece there. This will grow five to 10 pounds of potatoes. That's amazing. Like this is like the great multiplier. <laughs> Um, and once we plant these and harvest these, we can save those potatoes for the next season. So far, we've only planted in spring. We're going to try fall this year. Um, and so this potato probably could become, let's just make one more. This variety is a Viking potato. Uh, we got this from Haas Tools. Uh, we'll put a link below. By the time this video comes out, they're gonna be all out of stock, but definitely next year. When you're ordering seed potatoes, ordering them in the winter for spring is a pretty good rule of thumb. I have prepped these about two weeks ago. They're ready to go in the soil. When you plant, you're gonna make sure that the white side is down and the sprout side is up. This is where the green foliage is gonna poke through the ground. All the potatoes will grow from this side down. This is really exciting, guys. If you have grown potatoes, what is your favorite variety? Put that in the comment below. Um, this year we're growing Viking potatoes, German butterball, uh, Austrian fingerling, and Norland red potatoes. And then we have some uh, potatoes from last spring, some Adirondack blues, which were like our all-time favorite. So let's get planting. At risk of repeating myself, when you take the potato, you want to make sure the sprouts are to the sky. And I'm just going to lay these out probably about every eight inches or so, eight to 12 inches, I guess. But really giving them enough space is pretty important. Once I place these down, I'm going to cover that up with a little bit of compost. And then I'm going to put over some rotting hay over that. That really helps to reduce the weed pressure. But before I put down the hay, I'll make sure all of these drip tapes are nicely along the top of that compost. And then we'll spread out that hay. And there's enough energy in the potato that it will sprout regardless of photosynthesis, okay? so. Once again, potatoes behave a little bit differently than a regular seed. Uh, that seedling, um, once it pops up, it needs uh, light and stuff like that. But anybody who has had a potato in a cupboard knows that they will grow regardless of light. And so covering them up with compost and then hay is not gonna affect their growth at all. It'll affect the weeds growth because they will not be able to grow. But pretty soon in like two or three weeks, we'll have sprouts coming out of that hay and that means we are successful. Now, you always wanna make sure that you have really loose soil when planting potatoes because those, if there's lots of rocks, 
or sticks or things like that in the soil, then your potatoes will be misshapen or it'll make it difficult for them to grow. One thing about the straw is when we hill with the straw, straw is really light and fluffy and should give us some really, really nice plump potatoes. All the potatoes are planted. Uh, by the way, those Viking potatoes in this row, oh, that's hard, in this row, I did not heal. Um, I may regret that because that is the one potato that I'm really interested in trying this year. The reason I did that is I got busy and uh, which happens on the homestead. So I'm not gonna be too hard on myself, but also lots of people will say you don't need to do anything to them or they've, they've planted potatoes for years and never healed them. So follow us along and uh, see how this works out. It might be something that doesn't ever need to be done. I know that potatoes are grown around the world in different growing conditions. And so, you know, you, you can only take those types of things with a grain of salt because, you know, somebody where it's drier, they won't have those problems or they don't have the pest pressure uh, that potatoes might usually have somewhere else. And so for here, we're gonna try. Uh, we have a really dry summer, really after May, we don't get any rain. So now that that is done, I'm gonna take a wheelbarrow of compost, cover all the potatoes, replace the drip over them, and then put the hay on top. It's gonna to be fantastic. <laughs> Potatoes are under the soil. I put some compost on top. Drip tape is in the right place. Only thing left for me to do is to get that hay and start laying that out. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take probably three or four of our rotted bales of hay. A bale of hay, if you don't know, um, is like compacted into flakes. It's, it's almost like a loaf of sliced bread. Each slice is a flake, and I'm gonna take those flakes and where I don't want anything growing in the aisles, I'm gonna lay them out like tiles. I, level, I want zero weeds in the aisle. stout method um, you hill with hay so we will continue to add hay and leave the potato plant the potato leaves in the plant above the hay and as we continue um, hilling with hay we'll have more and more weed suppression and once we're ready we can just uncover everything dig up those potatoes and have a humongous harvest crossing our fingers